welcome to this next set of the Tarot Wheel of the Year. We've moved out of Leo into Virgo. And first of all, I'm going to show you the tarot card that represents Virgo, and this is the Hermit. The Hermit is, of course, the light bringer, as you can see there. He has his triple-headed dog, Cerberus, the guard dog of the underworld. There's a symbol of near the foreground to the left, as you can see, is the sperm of vitality and generation, literally life-giving sperm. A little bit higher up on the left-hand side you can see the Orphic Egg, which is the idea of creating something with the thoughts it being manifested, with a snake wrapped around it, and there's loads and loads of wheat grains you can see also in the picture. And this is because the Herbert in Virgo brings us that time of year, which is about harvest time, such a beautiful time of year, that last ten days in August when the crops are being harvested. So let's take these cards one at a time. And so here's the very first of the three in the series. And this one is called Prudence, the Eight of Discs. And Prudence is a most delightful quality. But let me take you back a little bit to the Hermit, because the thing about the Hermit card that perhaps is most surprising to those who don't know it well, is this is actually one of the best placements for business. And so here we come with this very practical, rational, logical card, the Eight of Discs, Prudence. And this is all about Virgo communicating itself through the number eight, which in the Tree of Life is another pillar of severity. It's called Hod, and it's about communication. So Prudence is all about making use of whatever resources that you have in a sensible, careful, practical, well-thought-out way. So whenever you get prudence as a guidance in a tarot reading, it's advising you to be careful, to be cautious, to look at the practicalities and not to rush in without due consideration. In terms of business, it's such a splendid card because what I've learned is that through prudent management of whatever resources you have, you have the possibility to transform these, and we'll see what that is in the next set along the series. But for now, let's look about a card, and the first thought that I have in my mind is, well, why would I want to transform this card? It's already a very useful card, very helpful, and I know people born in the time of prudence, and as a lifetime issue, it's a wonderful one to have once you've got a handle on it. So, let us look at transforming it, and here's the card that we're going to use to do so. It's number 71, and you can see that beautiful colour, pink and the clear, which combine together to make pale pink with these colours. So, let's just transform it anyway and see what comes up, bearing in mind what a useful card it is already. So those are the words for the transformation process. And here we go. And when we turn the card over, this is what we see. And this is the jewel in the lotus. The jewel in the lotus. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And so this is the jewel in the lotus. This is a fundamental quality that we're talking about here. It's about taking responsibility of your thoughts and feelings. Because thoughts and feelings open the door to the power of love. And I guess when I look at that card with that opening lotus flower, and I see the seven others beneath it, all with the five-pointed star, which represents humanity in the process of becoming evolved, then there's a lot about that card that relates to love, and that's something I've not seen before. This has the ability to be able to bring the light to others, and of course you can gather that already from Virgo being the light bringer through the Hermit, to shine the light on the situations so that they may be seen more clearly. And that is how we transform 
this beautiful card. Thank you very much.